the late season. Big country, big herds, flint, steel, and black powder. Ingredients for one of North America's most unique hunting adventures. The closest one was 180. I need, I need them to be about 100. Last yeah, week, I was joined by Xander Budnick, fellow adventurer, content creator, and new hunter. This is probably one of like top 10 coolest things I've ever done in my life. We snuck in on a big herd of elk, but with the limitations of my flintlock rifle, they were just a little bit out of range. So this week, we're back for another round. Oh. Zero degrees Fahrenheit and 69% humidity. Oh, what a beautiful day. It's gorgeous. Got some fresh underwear on. I'm a new man. <laughs> Let's go. It's amazing what that makes you feel like. <gasps> what is this day four? Day three? Four? Four. <sighs> All right. Day four. Getting back after it. I'm not sure what we're gonna do today. I think we're just gonna drive over there and see if we can find that that herd. I, I, they're probably wrap around, be on the other side of the mountain. We didn't get back to the truck till about seven o'clock last night and I don't think we were even back at camp till eight or nine. Who knows, it was a, it was a hefty day. Asleep right after food and then right up this morning and back out the door. Honestly, I love it. It's like, if this isn't living with intention, I don't know what is. Cause we've been at it for a few days now, nonstop. And it's just, it's real living. <laughs> it's great. I'm enjoying myself thoroughly. The Flintlock rifle a weapon as uniquely American as apple pie. Well, I'm not actually sure that apple pie is uniquely American, but I sure know the flintlock rifle is. Muzzleloaders in general can be a bit finicky, but the flintlock is especially so. Primarily because the ignition mechanism, the lock, which is made up of the hammer, the frizzin, and the pan, are on the outside of the weapon and fully exposed to the weather. This can wreak havoc on getting the thing to go off if you're not especially careful about protecting it from the weather. And as the saying goes, keeping your powder dry. Add to this the fact that there can sometimes be a lengthy delay between the time you pull the trigger and the time the rifle actually goes off, and you've got a weapon that adds a few more layers of difficulty to a hunt that's already challenging. There's a big herd right over here. There's another seven or eight head over here. Um, thinking probably the wind for that one, if we come around this way, is not going to be good. So we're going to need to come in from this way. So I think we might find this where this ridge comes down and try to work in on these. And then if that doesn't work, it's probably another mile and a half to these over here just on the ridge but there is no cover up there it is wide open there's not a tree in sight <laughs> maybe some rocks feeling optimistic i think we're in a good position to approach these elk got a good wind hopefully i, I think we've got a good wind up there um so the elk are on the other side of this mountain. I think we can work our way right up this ridge, right up this spine, and should end up on top of the first group that we saw. Uh, and if we end up messing that up, there's another group that's pretty significant hike, but there's a, another big, big herd a little farther down the ridge. So got a couple options and plenty of time. Yeah, Clay, we have to get them today. Because I'm on my last pack of jelly beans. When the sun comes up, it heats up real quick around here. It just went from, God, uh, what, Fahrenheit or Celsius? Like negative 10 Celsius up to 
you know, zero degrees. We just went from all our uh, gear on to right down to our hiking stuff. Hiking stuff. <laughs> Don't use this. <laughs> <laughs> My brain's not functioning. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's we'll what be in our underwear before long. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Made it to this first set of rocks. We gotta make it, I think, to that next set up there. And the elk, I think, should be off the back side of that. So that's our target. We'll get up there. Just be as slick and sly as we can up on those rocks. So we don't get a skyline and just kind of peek down. But I wanna glass this basin first just to make sure there's nothing on the ridges. All right, I think we're good. Keep trucking. Maybe, maybe turn your lens hood around. It might help with the reflection a little bit. What's up? Turn your lens hood around. Just maybe it might cut the reflection just a hair. Turn the lens, the lens hood. Like the reflection. All right, so I've, we've made it that second group of rocks. The cows that we saw, I think they were right over here. I don't know if they're still there or not, but uh, we're just going to kind of ease around here and look, just look down. Xander, I want you to just kind of give me a little bit of space until I get eyes on them. I'm just going to keep on this side of the rocks just a little bit and I'll ease my way out there so I can look down. That's it. I'm officially out of jelly beans. Better get this elk today. So they, so they should be maybe 200 yards just down this ridge on the other side. So we'll just keep working down this way until I think I can pop over and see one. The problem with this type of situation, the only problem really, is that they bed on the downhill side of these mahoganies, and so there's usually just a ton of cover around them. 
So I'm just gonna try to ease up here and get in position and just see what I can see. Maybe I get a clear shot at one. Maybe I have to wait there for a little while for one to stand up. We'll just have to see once we get there. Are they right here? Yeah. Did I make too much noise? Uh, it was just that last little bit. I knew it was pushing it. But... <sighs> and, uh, when you're that close to them, it's like... I mean, you're almost like melting across the landscape. Ooh. got within probably 60 yards of a, a an elk but I couldn't and I could see its vitals through the hole in the brush I just couldn't tell if it was a cow or not had ample opportunity to shoot I just couldn't tell um, tried to get Xander up a little closer so he could get some footage and just they picked this up made him nervous got up started away from us and but it's all right we're getting close every day we know where there's more elk so there's a giant herd over here on this open ridge. Uh, no cover again, but we're gonna head that way and see if we can get close to something. 
Looks like there's uh, there's a, there's 300 head of elk over there. There's just a giant herd. I think that's every elk in the valley. It's right there. From when we put our bags down to when we when we got close to the elk, it was probably like two and a half hours of slow movement, and from that last like. I think I think both of us made some pretty awkward noises. Clay dropped his bite on his back and I accidentally let out a fart. And we thought both of those situations led to it being over, but it uh, was until like the last little bit when, honestly, I, I thought I was like a stealthy ninja, but it was just not enough. Yeah. Just not enough. When you, when you think you're going slow enough, you need to go about three times slower, or maybe 10 times slower. It's, it was, yeah, mind blowing. All right, next, next, uh, next mountain. Let's see if it goes across the ridge. <laughs> we got a long way back to the truck. Uh, well. Um, we were trying to get in on this big herd and got up over on the, on the back side of this. Got another 300 yards to go and the wind's just going whoop right to them. And they're all standing there on the ridge looking at us. They're heading down. So that's that for that herd. Oh, well, that's that. 300 head elk. They were there five minutes ago. Now they're not. The wind just could not be any more wrong. But I didn't know it until we got right here and it was too late. All right, so we uh, just working our way back to the truck. We still got a long way to go. But we see the elk, they went off of this. They didn't go too awful far, maybe a mile. But they're all camped out on this, another big hill down there so they'll be around there somewhere in the morning I think they uh, I think they enjoy it just they see us coming they probably see us coming from a long ways away and they wait till we get almost there and then they say ah run away and they keep, they keep, they go just far enough, they're like, ah, oh, I think we can get to them again. And then you go a little bit farther, and then a little bit farther, and before you know, you're 10 miles from the truck. And the sun's going down. And the temperature's dropping. Whew. That's the price we pay. What fun. What's for dinner? Not elk. Xander, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Pleasure. Yeah. Me too. Oh, it smells this is perfect. Come home from hunting and Teague's got a fire going and it's cooking. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, honestly, it was a pretty great day today. Um, spotting those elk and getting real close to them. I think it was like within the last like 100 yards that it took us about two and a half hours to inch forward. I was following Clay and I was in my socks and just making as little noise as possible and following his instructions and just being absolutely as silent as I could. And it wasn't until we we're within 50 or 60 yards of them that Clay's movements slowed down even more dramatically. I think at one point he dropped his binoculars by accident, but he stood still for about 10 minutes. And I think that like, he told me that that's how you can make a little bit of noise, but you have to like let it settle down. And <sighs> there's a point where we we're getting real close to the elk. Clay was already up there and uh, he motioned me to come forward to like, you know, film, but he's like, be very, very quiet, be very, very still. As I came up and I was as quiet as I thought I could possibly be, dodged every single leaf and branch, but made just enough noise. And it was just a bit too quick that the elk got uh, alerted and I bumped him. I bumped him today. And uh, that was a lesson learned. You, you have to, 
you make noise, you gotta let them settle down. So uh, that's what Clay was doing earlier. He made some noise and he put 10 minutes on his timer and he let him settle down. And then he made moves again and I was just a bit too hasty and that was a, whew, lesson learned. Pretty cool experience though. Hope Clay still likes me as a friend. <laughs> Whoa, what in God's name? It's fro they're frozen jelly bean cans of beans. Um. I had, the uh, the regulator was frozen, so I had to put the torch on that to uh, thaw it out so the damn fire would go. <laughs> go ahead. Holy macaroni. <laughs> All that like loud footery that I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> All that bungling through the woods and scaring the elk away. I deserve this. <laughs> yeah, I think you topped off. Thank you. Looks good. Oh my god, that's so good. It's like so cheesy and meaty. Done it again. <laughs> Alright, this is this is the part where we eat our food and pretend like we're enjoying each other's company. <laughs> you got a 50 cal? Yeah, 50 cal in mine. It's TVA. Ooh, gotcha! Later, nerd. He's like a pancake. We're back to where we were on day one, chasing the big herd that we've been chasing since we've seen them on day one. <laughs> They're in a new spot, but uh, we think we have a, a good way to get up to them. Let the fun begin. Yeehaw. All right. Finally getting some snow. Um, we've got a the big herd of elk up off on this ridge here and, and they're kind of strung out all the way up and down this ridge and they're fairly close to it and it's a it's kind of a steep like a a knife ridge so i i think we should be able to come around the back side of it and just kind of ease up and um we should be able to get in range with them uh, of them coming over the back side if the wind is going to cooperate with it today you never know till you get over there. So we got a long hike just even to get around the back side of that ridge. So um, we're gonna get started. Give it a try. Check where the edge is first, eh? Cause, uh, cause it kind of just drops. Yeah. Nice. Whew, that was all I had. <laughs> <laughs> We're working our way up this, this side of the hill. We believe the elk are just on the other side of this. The unfortunate part is the wind is not in our favor.
so close something I don't know what it was something spooked them from the bottom they were all they ran back up the hill and they were all looking down at the bottom God. everything going right to the button that was so close I had one at 150 and I wanted to get closer. I thought that was it. What? I thought we had it. Once we got to that ridge, I thought we had it too. We were just a little bit too just late. Too slow. Yeah, just a little yeah. too late. Should have started sooner. But. Mm. One more day. One more freaking day. <sighs> that, was, that was pretty cool though when we were sneaking up and then the, the fog was like with the fog and the fog went away when we were stuck there with all those elk and we had to sneak down. I don't know, that was pretty cool, man. It's open for another half. Yeah. Fog bank. Yeah. Fog just bank. didn't happen. We were there for like 45 minutes. <sighs> that was exciting. Yeah. Yeah, we had to climb that whole like scree field, which took like two and a half hours. <sighs> it was... Yeah, we didn't get an elk, but that was a good day. That was a good day. <sighs> When that herd went, when that part of the herd went behind that corner, me and Clay ran up to go get real close. We didn't realize that there was the other half of the herd way up higher, higher in some uh, some other hills, other mountains. And so what Clay guessed is that they started riding, which alerted the herd that we just chased down, and then and then all of a sudden we were another half mile away from them. Yeah, they covered ground a lot quicker than we did. Yeah. That's all we got for the day. It's almost five. Time to head down. Well, I was gonna have you go on that, but maybe it's too windy. Thumbnails. What you got going on here? We're gonna make pulled pork sliders. With some Smitty's beard sauce. Scotch bonnet. It's good stuff. I'm <laughs> oh, gonna have to let that heat up for a little bit, I reckon. Let's see if we got. Right? How's that look? It looks fantastic. I'm pumped. Mmm. That's so good. You must like it. <laughs> <laughs> I grew a boob on the side of my water bottle. Just give me some flavorful water. <laughs> I guess it'll still hold water. <laughs> More water now. Nobody else has a water bottle shaped like that. Cold one today. It's windy and cold. That's the way it's supposed to be. Here we go. All right. 
great. Last day, and she's a cold one. So we've got some elk spotted. Um, look like just a few, maybe six or seven. Could be the other ones that we pushed from around the other side of the mountain. But they're right up underneath those rocks where we were watching that big herd the other day. So we're gonna just like back up that ridge, climb up on those rocks and shoot one. Hopefully. That's the way it's supposed to work. So every day when we start off these going up the hills like this I I focus a lot on the the negative kind of pessimistic uh, and people have commented on that before how I talk about all the things that could go wrong because there are a thousand ways that things could go wrong when you start something like that and just a small handful of ways that they could go right I heard Ronella say once that when it comes to hunting, it's okay to be a pessimist in your mind, but not in your boots. And I, I like that because all you gotta do is just keep going, keep going every day. We're getting close every day and every day that we go out, our odds go up just a little bit. Just gotta keep after it. So those elk are not bedded there. Um, there's some fresh tracks that go up and I kind of lose track of them in the rocks up there, but they're not on this face. They're on the other side of the ridge somewhere. So we'll just ease down there and check those tracks out, see where they go. Maybe get up to that ridge and look down the other side. It's always really fun to watch Clay because he's so careful to check every single angle to make sure that he's not bumping elk. I would just charge in there, guns blazing. <laughs> That's why I got a lot to learn and it's great to hang out with somebody like him. Patience. All right, so we just picked these elk's tracks up. I think they're gonna be uh, across this ridge in this other saddle. So the best thing to do might be to ease up to these rocks so we can look back down. See the big herd? I don't know what, I, I think this small herd made it when I was there and um, joined up with them. But they are, maybe we can get in a position to get a shot at them. It's going to be, I don't know if they're going to be within range of the rim rock up there. But we can go around the back side of that ridge. We should have a good wind boosting up that face. Not too, too far. So on the first day we spotted this group of elk. On the second day we chased them up this hill and then across to the hill that we're on now. And now on the last day we're doing it backwards. So this is our last attempt. We got a, I don't know, mile hike up and down a saddle. And then uh, we'll be into some elk. Hopefully. Hopefully. made the hike just from over that mountain there. It's freezing, the wind is chilly. Time to layer back up because elk are just on the other side of this ridge.
freaking mist. Oh. I clean freaks just clean this. I cannot understand that. <laughs> oh my god, what is going on with me this year? I can't catch a freaking break, man. Now I'd love to be able to blame these misses on my weapon, but the truth is, I just flat out screwed up. For some reason, I had it in my head that I needed to aim high, even though I knew my rifle was shooting dead on at 100 yards. Why I had that in my head, I have no idea. I don't know. She was 110 yards. That shot, that I should be able to make that shot, no problem. Now getting a second chance with a muzzle loader is a rare thing, but getting a third is dang near unheard of, but that's exactly what happened when we came around the ridge. We found that same herd, and they were only 60 yards away. Now by this time, my confidence was thoroughly rattled, and without a steady rest, I just didn't feel comfortable taking another shot, and so I just had to let him go. And so for the first time in a long time, I end the elk season with a tag in my pocket, a humbling reminder of our respective roles as predator and prey and the fact that things don't always, and shouldn't always, work out in our favor. Well, that's it for this trip. No more chasing elk through the mountains. All in all, it was a pretty incredible experience. Learned a lot, getting to spend time with Clay, and uh, I know he's a little disappointed that he was unable to make a shot, and I know he's a good shot, but uh, things didn't line up this trip. But overall, I think things worked out perfectly. All right, time to show Clay how it's done. <laughs> so you, you, you'll cock it back. Okay, so the back trigger, a, it's a double trigger. So the back trigger makes the front trigger a hair trigger. So you pull the back trigger first, and then the front trigger is just a very light touch and it'll go off. Okay, okay. We'll go see if you killed it. <laughs> From like 15 yards. <laughs> yeah, we did it. Dang, right there. We done did it. Man, wish I'd have done that on an elk. <laughs> Jeez. Sweet, thanks. That was a lot of fun. I have to get me one of these.
come back, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, you almost got it in the door. <laughs> All right, that's uh, that's gonna be a wrap for this one. Um, this, I, I don't. Rec this is the first time I've finished the elk season with a tag in my pocket, and I don't remember. I don't remember the last season, maybe ever. Um, so it's a little bit of a stinger, uh, but you can bet that I'll have the shooting figured out before I come back out here next year. Um, I don't know what was going on. I don't know if I was flinching. If I just wasn't accounting for the downhill angle or what, but anyway, it's the way it goes sometimes. But we still got the whitetail season coming up. We're basically going straight from this to the, the late whitetail camp. And with the weather moving in, it looks like we might have a, a pretty good season. So appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one.